Well, the Auckland Writers' Festival has been running for 18 years and attracts some of the world's best writers and thinkers, as well as over 70,000 festival goers. Bulgarian Kiwi historian, travel writer, novelist and poet Kapka Kasabova is a guest of the festival and she joins us now to tell us about her award-winning book, Border. Welcome to the show. Yes, Thank you very well. much. It is lovely to have you here. Now, let's, just, let's find out a little bit about your background. So you are from Bulgaria, but your family immigrated to New Zealand. That's right, in the early 90s. Yeah, my father, who's an academic a scientist, was offered a job at Otago University. So we moved from post-communist Bulgaria to Dunedin. Wow, well, that would that's been, a yeah. bit of a change, isn't yeah. it? How did you find Dunedin? Cold. I guess we <laughs> expected all of New Zealand to be a bit like the top of the North Island. Right. Yeah, like the Bay of <laughs> Islands. <laughs> and uh, y your first work was published here in New Zealand, wasn't it? Tell Absolutely. us about that. Yeah, I started, well, I started writing in English uh, when we moved here, and um, I started with poetry. So my first two poetry books were published here by Auckland University Press, and uh, my first two novels. So I was really here in, throughout my late teens and 20s. So what was it like writing poetry, which is quite a personal thing, in a language that's not your mother tongue? I guess it was the easiest way for me into a new language uh, because poetry somehow seems to um, offer you poetry. You find your voice in poetry easier if you're a poet. Um, mm. And I had been a poet since childhood. So that was my way in. And I suppose you can be a poet when writing prose too. Let's talk about this book that Mel is hanging on to. Oh, sorry. Yes, here we go. Border. <laughs> what was the concept behind that? I wanted to go back to what is left of the Iron Curtain, the bits of the Iron Curtain in Southeast Europe, behind which I grew up effectively. Um, we're talking about the fence at the time electrified and alarmed and heavily militarized that separated the so-called Eastern Bloc during the Cold War from uh, NATO territory from the West. So in this case, it was us in Bulgaria, behind the Iron Curtain, and on the other side, Greece and Turkey. Wow. Um, and I mean, growing up behind the Iron Curtain marked my childhood. Um, I think it marked everybody's childhood at the time. And um, I was keen to return back to what's left of that fence and see who lives there, what it's like to live in a border zone, in a recently demilitarized border zone, which is once again seeing a traffic, a heavy traffic of refugees from the Middle East, because that's effectively the land route into Europe. That's the way in. What was it like for you growing up behind the Iron Curtain? We couldn't leave. The Iron Curtain was there to stop us from going anywhere. So that's, that was a formative experience, this feeling of the border, is this deadly border, uh, mili militarised and, you know, within 20 kilometres of it, the, the, you had no access to it within 20 kilometres. It was a, not just the fence, but the whole area around it. And did you feel that? Zone. Did you feel that when you were there? You that? were aware of it. You were not allowed to go as a civilian. Uh, but this feeling of living in an open air prison. Uh, yeah, well, I'm curious about that because I guess it becomes normal, if, if anything. Is that the sort of sense you get when you're in that environment? Like, this is just how the world is and we deal with it? Or is there always that sense of wanting to, you know, explore, I guess, and change the world slightly? I mean, that's really nicely put. Yes, I think in a society, especially in a closed society, very abnormal things can become normalised. Mm, mm. And to an extent, it was normalised. That was all of us in the Soviet world living in an effectively, what was effectively an open air prison. Yeah. So there were a lot of us sharing that condition. In that sense, it was normalised. Yes, yeah. But I also remember when I started becoming aware of it as a kid. And I think as a kid, you're very sensitive to all sorts of injustice and imbalances you sense when something's not right. And I just knew there was something not right about the fact that many foreigners were coming to us on the Black Sea side for mm. holidays, where we also went. So I could, you know, I looked at these people coming from all over Europe, but we couldn't go to them. Mm. You're, you're living in Scotland now, aren't you? But you're here in New Zealand for the Writers' Festival. Tell me a little bit about what you're doing here. I'm staying with my parents, which is lovely. Oh, nice. My oh, they're still here in New Zealand. Oh, yeah. Brilliant. So it's lovely to be to be back home. And uh, in, in many ways, New Zealand is, is still home for me. So, wow. um, and what's your involvement with the Writers' Festival? What will you be doing there? I'll be in conversation with Lloyd-Jones. Um, so I'm, I'm very fortunate. 
uh, to be doing that. And I'll be giving a workshop in, uh, well, the theme is writing about place. How long does it take to write one? Out of curiosity? One of these. Yeah. Uh, well, it took me about three years. Wow, okay, cool. A lot of research involved. And what are you working on yeah. now, speaking of place? I'm writing about another exceptional place, um, which is Ohrid, the oldest lake in Europe and one of the three most ancient lakes in the world, together with Baikal and Tanganyika. And it's um, a very beautiful lake in Macedonia and Albania, the Western Balkans. Wow, there must be some great research involved with that. Yes, mm. I'm loving it. Well, thank you for taking your time out yeah. to come to New Zealand for the Writers' Festival. Now, the 2018 Auckland Writers' Festival is currently underway. Kaka will be speaking on Friday as well as Sunday, which is the final day of the festival. You can check out the Writers' Fest website for details.